How do you reflect on those, like the early, the ballerina part of that? When you watch that, what do you think? Um, hard work. Is it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hard work, but a lot of determination, willpower. I mean, it gave me so much confidence to know that if I was prepared to put the hours in, that I could achieve what I wanted to achieve. And, and I learned so much from that world because of that, just that determination and not to give in. And, and, and do you think, have you carried that through? I mean, is that idea, does it exist? Um, does it it does. It is in a different way, obviously. Um, uh, I have to use it in a different way. But uh, what it also gave me, obviously, is a passion and the understanding of what it feels like to be active and how that makes me feel inside and how I could easily pass that on to others and how important that is to pass that on to others. So, because you became the principal dancer at the RB, at the Royal Ballet, at 20. Yes. Now, to me, that sounds very young. Is it, is that unusual? It's, 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 it's like a sports professional. You know, you, you have to start young. Yeah. Um, um, and yes, it, it, it depends. Um, usually, as a principal, you do start a bit later, um, probably in your, in your late 20s. But I was lucky to be pushed earlier. I think just because I had the resilience and I was happy to take the knocks that go with it, because yeah, yeah. you're constantly coming, you know, <laughs> um, and being told you're not good enough all the time. But I, I, I could take that. Yeah. And I think that's why I, I was pushed early. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, based on that, uh, who were your heroes at the time? I mean, were they uh, dancers or were they sport? Um, well, or? first actually in gymnastics was Nadia Comaneci. Yeah, um, um, I was obsessed with gymnastics yeah. and I did that when I was at state school, uh, just as a club actually, and was in, totally inspired by my gymnastics teacher and loved her to bits and, and, and loved that kind of hardcore sort of yeah. grueling sort of hours that you had to put into it and, and got to compete a couple of times in gymnastics and thought that was my vision, you yeah. know, and, and even actually a bit of swimming. But uh, <laughs> oh, I, I, I know, I know. I you shouldn't to tell do, me that. No, I know. <laughs> but um, I realised I, I, I came to it too late and I was too tall and all these other things that suddenly threw back to me. But um, I was doing ballet at the time because it assisted my gymnastics. Yeah. And then I realised that actually ballet, it was much more creative yeah. and I could have a lot more fun with it. You know, it wasn't so... I suppose the routine every day yeah, wasn't yeah. as similar, you know, it changed yeah. a lot. So uh, that's why I fell into that path. But also people like Fred Astaire. So those clips that I got to experience yeah. was because I was obsessed with this movie star, yeah. which of course made his success way earlier in the theatres and just what he was able to be so original with yeah. dance. So I, we'll come back onto that, that, that idea of media's involvement with promotion of activity. Yes. I just, I, it's a tough life being a, a ballerina. Yes. Tough life being an athlete, yes. really, is what yeah. it is. I mean, how easy has that been, or how difficult has it been to perpetuate that into, into later life, post-career? Um, it's just a need. I, I need it. Um, I, I, I realised that, I, you know, I thought as, as a, a professional, I could stop all exercise altogether as soon as I stopped my career, and that I could be a normal person. But what a normal person is? I knew I had to be active because my body got weaker, I got more injuries as soon as I stopped professionally dancing. And I'm not saying you have to do any activity. I realised very quickly it wasn't had to be an extreme like it was as a dancer and all, all the hours I did then, but I had to keep ticking over. Yeah. My body had to, I needed it, my body needed it, but my head needed it. Yeah. Because I, I'd get down quicker, I, you know, just stupid things would ir irritate me. Um, I knew I had to keep active. Yeah. And so I had to look at different sources. But yeah, it came through many other ways as well. So, it's interesting because <laughs> we were chatting at the back there with, with Barry and we were talking about that competitive edge. Yes. That as, you, as we start to age, that competitiveness starts yes. to form. What, what, that what, do you, drive. What, what is the drive for you? you know, what, the drive what for me it? is just understanding how it makes me feel and knowing that other people have got to feel like that. Um, the attributes of dance um, is massive because it affects you emotionally, um, not just physically. And, and I know that just by a flavour of that, the attributes are so worthy for mm. anybody of any yeah. ability. Yeah, yeah. And it's incredibly inclusive. I mean, I was totally addicted to sports when I was young. That's what I was made to do. I was, you know, if I hadn't gone into the creative arts, I'd probably gone into the sports yeah. um, because I love that 
punishing sort of routine. Yeah, yeah. But you don't need that in dance. You can, you can get all those attributes, but not to an extreme. Yeah. You know, it can, it's healthy for your mind, you know, it activates your mind, you're constantly learning moves that, you know, have to revolve into the next move, you know, so memory skills, um, your ability to strengthen and, and be supple in your joints, but especially in your muscles mm. and everything, but it's just the way it makes you feel. Those yeah. massive endorphins you get just from music and how inspiring it is. Yeah. So <laughs> National Fitness Day brings me on to that really quite nicely. You're a big supporter of National Fitness Day. It's UK Active's approach to, to, to make the most active day of the year mm. just you've supported it a number of years you're supporting it again this year yes. what what what's your drive why why care about the activity of the nation um well i have two teenage daughters um I, they were telling me that they were getting bored with physical education p very you know very clear and and you know the next generation basically are so stimulated with what's on screen mm. that suddenly physical education wasn't stimulating at all. Mm. It wasn't enjoyable. It was boring. And I was thinking, God, how can we get a twist in this? We need something else to inspire them. How do we make it enjoyable? There must be other sources. And for me, it was easy. Obviously, I have a great plug, you know. Yeah. I, I love dance. Yeah. And I do a dance fitness program. And it was just to put that into schools and to see kids change and how they feel about themselves, their confidence changes. And, it, and it's not using it as a massive school base. They're not becoming you know, professional dancers of any kind. Yeah. But I could see that if we use dance as part of physical education with the music and also the massive national styles, it was a massive learning thing. But then it was engaging them then to have the confidence to step into other sports. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't cutting them off. It was creative as well. It yeah. uses their imagination. It, it's vast for me. Yeah. I mean, and I love sports as well. So I'm not saying that sport has to stop and dance has to take over. <laughs> no, for sure. But I'm just saying that, that yeah. I know that it has a much worthy state to affect young people. And from if they have that lovely enjoyment of being active, they're more likely to be active as, yeah. as adults. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, yeah. I think we've got a short clip actually of of you last year at yes. National Fitness Day. So we're going oh, to show that and take a look at that. might be embarrassing, hot and sweaty. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. I love it though. It's brilliant. I think for, for me, what I, I watch things like that and I think actually it's, it's the breadth of people that are involved in there. It's young children all the way through to the elderly. I mean, it, how, how do we get the nation active? And actually, I mean, what are your thoughts on across the lifespan? Because that really is where we're trying to attack, isn't it? Um, I mean, obviously, uh, creating more hubs for activity is really important. Creating ease. Uh, for them to be able to join in, that it's not always about money that they have to pay, you know. And so I suppose community-based things are incredibly important. But also creating an importance of why. Mm. Why do we have to be active? Because of our health, overall health. Yeah. And, and if we, if, you know, maybe we need a message that is hard kicking as the commercials on cigarettes, you know, all the problems we have um, with people smoking, from young to old, why can't we do that with, you know, what the problems of being inactive? Why can't we show that, teach them, you know, what you're doing to your body if you're inactive, what you're doing to your mind if you're inactive, mm. depression, you know, all the weaknesses that come with it, the, the loss of confidence that comes with being inactive um, overall. And, and so if we were tougher, maybe, if there was a commercial that we can really get close to people's you know, feelings yeah. to how they feel inside and realize, and then show them actually the difference it would make. Yeah. In, in just a commercial, everybody's on the TV. I mean, everybody loves to watch TV. I love to watch TV. Yeah. 
but I also love being active. So if, if it's on television and, it's, and they can see it for themselves and it's a piece of education, it's not telling them, uh, tut, tut, tut. It's not that. It's just showing the attributes of being active. Um, obviously, you know, with the aged and everything, we have a massive population that is growing. You know, people are living longer. Again, there has to obviously be more care in, in, in you know, people's homes where maybe the young are involved mm -hmm. with the aged. And so that there's a, a sense of respect of understanding and learning about aged people so that we don't just isolate them. You know, they're so isolated and bring them into community where they come into schools possibly or the schools come and visit the home care centers for the aged. You know, uh, there has to be more interaction. Yeah. And, and, and learning where kids are naturally full of energy. So they can then you know, distribute that energy into aged and make them feel more stimulated, more lifted, more happy, basically. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's an interesting one because, because this year, in the lead up to National Fitness Day, uh, UK Active have been running this Fitness To Me campaign. Okay. So hashtag Fitness To Me. And actually just trying to understand in celebrities and politicians and the general public what it actually means to them to be physically active. So that's been part of a, a selfie campaign. Yeah. So we are going to get right. everybody involved now. So we're going to get the a lights up. A big selfie. Up. Let's get the lights up. You're going to have to stand up for this, guys. Everybody stand up. Sorry. Get, shake it off. You've been sitting for too long, yeah? And shake the important thing is what you've just done is expend one calorie just by standing up. So congratulations. <laughs> We've, now st jump. we've started the day. Right, Sorry, let's go. Then. Let's do that. It's all right. Here we go. Go on, go on, scream, shout, please. Movement. Don't look boring. Don't look. Please, you're inspired by this, yeah? I think after three, we're going to jump. After yeah, three, we're going we're gonna jump. Ready? Even a shout, Ready? please. One, two, three, jump. Woo! Yay! <laughs> let's do one more. I think more. a little bit more effort, please. Come on. Come on, Come even on, the ones on the side, please. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, a jump! That was good. Not now bad, they not might bad. remember Congratulations, it. everybody. <laughs> they might remember it now. <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope so, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's smiling and chatting. Look at that, just for that tiny activity. <laughs> so, so more recently, uh, and Darcy, is DD Mix. Yes. Which I'm really excited about. I think it's a fantastic idea. Oh, just thank just you. give us an idea about what DD Mix is all about. DD Mix, diverse dance mix. So it's using um, dance, but dance fitness. So we try and make it easier for everybody and, and they don't get terrified about the word. But it's, it's um, using all the national styles and eras to uh, get kids active without even realizing they're exercising. We don't want kids to uh, associate being physical as a chore. So I really wanted to use dance fitness as a part of a way of them being so distracted by things that are new. Mm. So, you know, we do from African to Bollywood, to line dance, um, to Arabic, to, uh, we do everything, basically. Yeah. Think of a national style, we do it. We even do Greek. Uh, we haven't done Morris dancing. I don't want to do Not that. Yet. But, you know, <laughs> it, 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 there is- Today is that chance. <laughs> Get no, some no, sticks. No, 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 we, we don't want any props. It, it has to be easy. And so uh, we create four moves, and it's delivered in schools as part of, uh, you know, have a curriculum, a part of physical education. And, and it's high time on task, and it just engages the kids instantly because of the music. Because yeah. they recognize a piece of music. We use the music, it's very style orientated. So, you know, you think of Arabic music, you think of African music, you know, um, Bollywood, you know, it, they, they, it brings the imagination up. And they start creating moves themselves. Then you put it part of a, a nice sequence of steps. And the, the, the goals and the achievements that are ticked off so quickly. Yeah. So their sense of, oh, wow, I put that move and move that together. And I created my own. It, it, it's, it's so fulfilling and it's, it's so happy. But also actually seeing the teachers deliver it. So yeah. we also help the teachers deliver it. And of course you get a lot of teachers going, oh, I don't do dance. Uh-uh. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. And, and you go, well, no, actually, just give us some time and we'll show you actually how easy it is to deliver it. Because yeah. we break it down. It's like anything. You see it as a whole, it's terrifying. You break it down, it's, it's really, it, it's actually quite simple. So it, I mean, it and giving like them it, those tools Yeah, to exactly do it. that. And, yeah. Uh, but it, it sounds like it's got the, that, that wonderful mix of fun. Yes, Which is fun. absolutely crucial. The, the idea, important. and you mentioned it, time on task. Yeah. Actually keeping people engaged constantly. Yeah, they, so they, they don't literally stop. They literally don't stop. Yeah. It's not queuing up. 
to the hip. Next, next. down the runway next, for long jumps. Next, jump. next, next. No, everybody's involved. <laughs> they go into teams. Yeah. They work with each other to help each other. So it's incredibly inclusive. And it's also about their ability. You know, you know, nobody's there to be the best dancer. Yeah. It's just about group exercise and enjoying participating together and seeing them move together. Um, and uh, it's so it, rewarding. It's great, I it, love going. There is this one thing too. that we call mas in psychology. We call it mastery, and, and that is learning a new task and, yeah. and becoming good at a new task. Actually, becomes self-motivating. Mm. And, and the wonderful thing about dance is actually you don't have to be the best dancer. You've just got to try and nub that part of the routine. Yeah. And when you, when you get it, that, that's self-fulfilling as you go through that. That's the wonderful thing about dance, would you yes. think? Yes. I mean, we are, we are paranoid about image and everything. Obviously, there's no phones in, in the class, and <laughs> nobody's filming if you, you did it better or who. They, they, they don't know that value. Yeah. Um, they know that they're out of breath. They're on the floor going, oh, I want to know what the next step is. Tell me, tell me. And, and, and it's, it's really inspiring. Brilliant. I didn't actually believe it would tick the boxes that quickly. I mean, there's obviously a whole lot of games to get them engaged straight away. So it's not just like, let's learn a step. One, two, three, da, da. Do you know what I mean? It, we That's have me to. dancing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, know, you can create that into a massive sort of activity and yeah. full-on and jumping and, and stimulates the mind and then when they get back to the classroom they're able to concentrate they've burnt all that yeah, yeah for sure yeah, yeah. And, and they're, they're proven the efficacy of that well let's say, rather than talk about it let's take a, a look at that we've got a short video of dd mix in action <laughs> Come on, it looks good, doesn't it? Shall we have a good, yeah. we can get everyone doing <laughs> You all just want to join in, I That'd know you do. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? And they're all nervous now. Yeah, they're like, oh, oh, my God, we've got to do it. Particularly the dads in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do dad dancing. So, you know, I watched that. I've got three little ones as well, and we were chatting about it earlier. I, I just love the fact that it's the, my, my middle daughter loves dance, mm -hmm. and, and for exactly the reasons that we've spoken about. But your daughters were a, a, a motivation for you? Were they an inspiration? In yeah. developing this? I think, you know, I've got teenagers now, and you see all, all the demands that are put on them, you know, coming up with the exam results, coming up, you know, the self-image problems and everything, and you just want to give them something that makes them feel good. Yeah. That was my biggest goal. There has to be a way of keeping somebody active, but they feel good, and that carries with them for the rest of the week and the rest of the term and the rest of the year. You know, it, it, it can be structured in so easily. Mm. And it can be simple. It doesn't have to be science, yep. you know, to make somebody feel good and confident about themselves. Yep. And being active is exactly that. We know that. But it's just having an easy delivery system and convincing the government if there's only two hours of sport a week, yeah. it's not going to make a difference. No. It has to be more. It has to be <laughs> four. I mean, we know, I mean, my kids are lucky. They go to private school. They get to do over five hours of activity a week. Mm. Why is it only two in the state? I mean, I went to a state school. Yeah. I did every club possible, <laughs> you know, yeah. to burn off all that energy yeah. that I had. And, and I, fortunately, I, I had that, a reason to do it. My mum was a working mum, so I had to go to all the clubs after school. But a lot of kids don't bother anymore. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. It is interesting. And, and the role of education in that. Yeah. So, principal dancer at 20, <laughs> uh, an incredible career. Thank you. Uh, now on to uh, DD Mix, uh, Strictly Come Dancing. Mm -hmm. What's next? Uh, for me, you know, I, I will only stick to what I know and, and dance and all the attributes of that and creating that awareness. So if I can do that through documentaries or anything and actually how it affects people and make that understanding, that learning, um, I will keep pushing that um, as much as I can um, in a very simple way. Fantastic. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll join me in thanking Dame Darcy Bustle for Thank today's session. Much. Thank you so much.